Pedro Pascal's absolutely killing it with The Last of Us and The Mandalorian. But while the premise of the two shows is different, the actor thinks they share one very similar trope. They both got loner dad energy. And honestly, I'm here for it. Dad, you love biscuits. I do. But I'm on Atkins. What now? It's a... Uh... You know what? We gotta run, but Sarah will be by later. She'll stay as long. I mean, 2023 is the year of Pedro Pascal, and he's about to take over the world with both The Last of Us and The Mandalorian Season 3. Also, if we've learned anything from his performances as Mando, it's that he's really good at playing a loner dad with a difficult child next to him. Oh, and he was quick to point that out in his recent interview as well. Speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, he said that there are some very clear similarities between Joel and Din Djarin. In fact, he even mentioned how this was one of the first things that came to his mind. Mind. That said, he also added that there are just way too many shows or movies out there that are similar to The Last of Us both theoretically and visually. Like, you know, the trope of an older protector watching over their child ward on this long quest. He said that while it's exciting to compare the two series for this trope, you've also got to keep in mind that neither of these shows invented this thing. As a matter of fact, he even mentioned stuff like the 2017 Wolverine movie Logan, Lone Wolf Club, and the 1973 Peter Bogdanovich film Paper Moon. And, to be fair, he's got a point. This is a very overused trope in cinema, TV, and even games. That being said, not everything is similar. In fact, for Pascal, there was another major difference between his characters outside of this trope. They both approached their relationships very differently. Okay, to be fair, the actor did mention how Joel and Din are super grumpy and have this armor around their real personalities. Do I look like I'm infected? Show us your arm. Of course, for Mando, it's a bit over the nose, but you get the point. I've run into some problems. I figured as much. Why else would you return? I want to hire your services. I'm retired from service. In fact, at one point, Pascal even admitted that the more you talk about these characters, the more similar they appear to be. Still, for him, the fact that everything about Joel hinged directly on his relationship with Ellie was what made him different. So to like uh pass how'd you end up in boston pass no more questions about me after all even without grogu the mandalorians still have other connections and are more of an open slate joel on the other hand has already been fully realized in video game form so we know where his story's going and this also means that it's harder to see him without putting him next to ellie but of course it all comes down to our own interpretation oh and guess what the last of us producer greg mazin also weighed in on this his response however was very different from pascal's in fact mazin thought the shows weren't similar at all now he did admit that you could maybe draw some parallels between them. Like, if you just do some simple math, you could equate Joel to Din Djarin and Ellie to Baby Yoda, but that's about as far as it goes for him. He said that the two shows are just in very different places, both in terms of their tones and themes. Now hold the stone out in the palm of your hand and tell him to lift it up. All right, kid. Lift the stone. And, I mean, he's right. One is a goofy Star Wars show about a bounty hunter and his adventures, while the other is this dark, post-apocalyptic world with creepy monsters. <laughs> Like, it really doesn't get farther apart than that. Oh, and even in terms of the whole loner dad thing, Mazin said that there are a ton of differences that are easy to overlook. For starters, Mando is interacting with this mute, adorable creature in Baby Yoda. Plus, he also happens to have force powers. Come on. You can have it. Come on. Good job. Good job, kid. Joel, on the other hand, is dealing with this teenager who's never been outside the confines of her community. So with everything that's happening in the show, she tends to get overwhelmed at times, which of course brings out some strong emotions. And that, in and of itself, is very complicated to interact with. Mazin also added that Din has a helmet on most of the time, which makes things different. You did what you had to do. I never saw your face. Though I'd say that it makes Pascal's job harder, because emoting without showing any facial expressions is an incredibly difficult skill. That said, there is another actor who knows all about playing similar roles to the one she's playing in The Last of Us. You're not immune from being ripped apart. You understand? It's important. 
I'm trying to keep you alive. Yep, it's Bella Ramsey. Of course, the young actor hasn't had nearly as long of a career as someone like Pedro Pascal, and yet she's already starred in some super iconic roles like Lady Lyanna Mormont on Game of Thrones. Winter is here, Your Grace. We need the King in the North in the North. Ah. Also, if you actually start drawing comparisons, you'll realize that both Liana and Ellie are kind of similar. As a matter of fact, throw Ramsey's role in Lena Dunham's Catherine Calls Birdie into the mix too. Like in all of these roles, she's portraying this young woman who's got to deal with real adult issues. Plus, she's forced to make these serious decisions that are far beyond her age. In fact, The Last of Us creator Neil Druckmann had this in mind while scouting for the role as well. He said that watching Bella during the audition didn't feel like watching an actor. Instead, it was almost as if Ellie had come to life. Oh, and guess what? The young actor also echoed the same sentiments. She talked about how Ellie felt like a character that she already had in her. What's more, she compared it to wearing a different skin in a video game. For her, Ellie was just another one of her skins, which is why she felt so comfortable in the role. Though, of course, the reaction from The Last of Us fans has been kind of negative, as according to them, she just doesn't look like her character from the game. But while the creators may not have nailed Ellie's look, there is one major aspect of the games that they've perfectly translated over to the show. The dynamic between Joel and Ellie. Now, in my opinion, the two protagonists' looks aren't nearly as important as the actual story beats and their relationship. After all, this is where The Last of Us shines as both a video game and a TV show. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that the visual design is almost secondary to the franchise. But obviously, it's not like the show is bad in that regard either. Like, come on, Pedro and Bella look great. Though again, it's the back and forth between these two that really turns this into an amazing story. Of course, we've all heard about the actor's own chemistry on set multiple times now. Still, the fact that it works so well on screen too is super impressive. And for both Pascal and Bella, it all comes together because of one simple thing, the emotional weight on these characters. Like without spoiling the show, Joel loses so much right at the start that he closes himself off to the world. And for Pedro, it's his turbulent relationship with Ellie that makes him lower his guard and turn into a human again. Meanwhile, Ellie is also in a pretty weird place. She's got this quote-unquote gift that everyone's trying to get their hands on. And yet, at the end of the day, she's just a child. So for her to take on the weight of this responsibility and make it her purpose to save humanity is just very overwhelming. In fact, according to Bella, no matter how hard Ellie tries to grasp the gravity of the situation, she can never fully grasp it, which is why she needs Joel to be there for her, as someone to trust and fall back on. And this, in turn, creates this emotionally rich dynamic between our two protagonists that, well, is sure to blow the viewers away. That's it for The Last of Us stars explaining the core differences between Joel and Ellie and some of their other roles. See you in the next one.